talk about this later. And so the total of all of these combined is here, 20.8. The total income is the accumulated taxes from production and trade. And uh, this is what you're going to get um, up here, here in the um, production. Because remember, we only get 26% of that 26%, just to remind you. That's why it's only 2.8. Um, so yeah. Uh, and yeah, uh, then here, so that's the tax. And then here you have the what, you're, what it's producing. So Andalusia is producing wine. If we hover over it, trading in, in um, center of trade is totaling 33% of the world's supply. Um, that's actually quite a bit. That's a lot. So stability cost miter fire. So each each good gives you a bonus. So wine gives you minus twenty five percent stability cost. Uh, wool gives you minus ten ship cost. But it, um, gold gold doesn't do anything. Uh, uh, grain gives you plus twenty five land force limits modifier. But that means that you have to be trading it exclusively, like a lot of it through your tr center of trade. So you don't get these um, these bonuses for nothing. You have to have a lot of it being go going through your center of trade. Um, so Aragon is actually the leading producer in wine. They have 9.3% of the world's production, while we have 2.3. And Genoa is the leading trader of it. So Genoa, with 7.2, is most likely to get the wine minus 25% stability cost modifier, because a lot of it is trading through them while we only have 1.3% of the world's um, uh, trade in wine, which is actually very small. But anything above, I would say 5% is a lot in this game, considering the sheer amount of provinces. So yeah, so here we have price, how much people are paying for it. Um, you can see there's a lot of different things that may be affecting it. So if Andalusia has been attacked, of minus 90%. If Andalusia is under blockade, minus 90%. Um, an effective way of ending a war and really hurting your enemies is blockading their ports and therefore killing off um, their production, killing off their, their the price of wine. Um, and so you can see here, so minus 10 if, it, if you have uh, low stability, so on and so forth. And then there's some things that can increase it, like uh, revolt risk at least 2, like lower below 2, have a refinery, having a university, if we're Muslim, for example, it's minus 100, because obviously Muslims, um, Sunni and Shia, are not allowed to drink wine. Um, but we get plus 10% uh, for province owner. Uh, Castile has a stability of 2. So that's what we get right now. Because that's the only thing that's affecting us at the moment. Um, yeah, yeah. So those are all the effects that can affect the, the global price. Although, you guys... This is not only for me, I believe. Hold on, let's go see. Um, wine in Toulouse, see 12.9. Luandoc, 12.9. Gascony, 12.9. They're all the same price. This affects the global price. Um, so when you're blockading a country with wine that only is producing wine, and a lot of your income also depends on wine, you're actually going to be negatively affecting you because the global price of wine is going to decrease. But at the same time, actually, at the same time, you'll also be helping your own wine producers because most of the wine's production will be coming through you. Which brings me to the next thing, which is trade value. And this depends on um, the center of trade. So all wine in my center of trade, or let's say wool, because we have a lot of uh, provinces that are producing wool, they're all roughly around the same because it depends on the uh, value contributed to the center of trade. And also depends on if it has a like a marketplace. So marketplace will increase the trade value by four four point eight, but the base is four point six without a marketplace. Um, see, no much uh, five four point five a little bit less four point six. Yeah. So obviously trade value can increase with prestige and with building trade buildings. I'll get to buildings in a second. Um, okay, that's actually a very important part of the game. Does everyone understand this section, the two sections I just talked about? The uh, tax and uh, production and center of trade as well. Any other questions? Just say nope if you have no questions. In that case, I'll continue then. Um, 
Okay, so this is religion as I showed you. Um, sending missionary, just click it here. Cost, it's going to cost me 32.5. I mean, if it was Muslim, but it's not. Um, 32.5 dollars, like a merchant, you could say. Provincial tax income plus 8 percent, and then city population plus 22. The larger the population, not only the higher the tax you have, so I mean, tax is directly affected by how big your population is. Therefore, at the end of the game, when you have much larger populations, you'll have much higher taxes and more money. But this also makes it more expensive to send missionaries to, because you have more people to convert to. Um, and then this is the chance of it succeeding every year. And this depends on all these things. Being Catholic, current ruler, fourth level, and provincial tax income. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's missionaries. This is the cores. I talked about this. If you hover over it, you can see some information. Um, if we do not... If we do not press these claims, if I do not take Granada and Almeria, in 50 years, um, I'll lose the core on it. I'll lose the core. I won't. Lo I will no longer have it. However, places like Galicia will never lose. Like Galicia will never. Um, their core here will never disappear because this is like really an an integral part. This is like the capital of their province. So. Galicia considers this to be one of her core provinces. This country may be created. Da, da, da. Uh, this is a potential capital of this nation, and I cannot remove this. This will never go away, even after 50 years. What do you know about... Sorry, there's a question. What do you know about supply and demand? Uh, I'm going to talk about supply and demand once we get to the ledger. There's actually an entire page dedicated to just supply and demand. That gets a bit icky, like sticky, but, um, uh, but I'll talk about that when we get to the ledger. Um, where was I? Yeah. So here we have the name. You can see that the province name is Andalusia, while the city name is different. So the city is Seville. I can see the history of it. I mean, whatever. Uh, the history of it. Um, population. Uh, of course, that increases, decreases over time. Um, uh, larger. See, the larger the population, the greater the production and tax income. Um, someone's asking a question. Can you center of trade? Uh, no, not with these ones. Not with these ones. If it's an artificial one, um, uh, if it's an, like an integral place like Galicia, you cannot remove it. What I do know, for example, like for playing with the Ottomans, um, you can remove the Byzantine cores. Or actually, that's actually um, you see the Byzantines though. If you hover over it, okay, you can remove it. If I go to Galicia, for example, and I hover over Galicia, that fifty years thing does not pop up. Means that I can never remove it. While if I go to, for example, Thrace and I hover over it, it'll see it says a nation will lose a core province in fifty years after the most recent of the event. Whatever. Um, here, same thing. See Byzantines in Macedonia. Uh, Bulgaria, this Bulgaria considers this to be their integral capital, so I can never remove it. Uh, does, does, gotcha, does that answer your question? Yes, so to answer the question, yes, there is a decision which you can pass, which removes them. For example, I can, if I conquer um, Aragon, I can uh, remove it from uh, most of their provinces. So you see? So a nation will lose a core province 50 years after the most recent of the following. After having received it, after the most recent time the nation was at war with the current owner, the most recent owner change of the province. So it's mostly number three. So a nation will gain a core province 50 years after having taken ownership of it. So if I conquer Valencia in 50 years, I'll get a core there. And then um, 50 years later, uh, uh, Aragon will lose their core there. I hope that answers the question. Does it? Okay. Any anything else before I move on? If um okay, good. Um moving on. So that's uh, that's cores. So here um okay, so underneath population, so what's that? It's growth. We can see it's growing, which is a good thing. So that's base, 3%, you know, babies, and then coastal center of trade, plus 1%, center of trade level, plus 2%, and then tolerance, plus 4, 
remember tolerance up here so we're getting plus four from the true Catholic faith so that's helping it grow by 10% I think everything should be around um, Spain's a bit different Be Spain is Madrid is different because it's landlocked Toledo gets plus one because it's the capital city so coastal provinces will always grow faster naturally Cadiz is growing slower hmm why is it growing slower oh sorry because it's only for centers of trade so Mercia uh, tolerance national focus is affecting it I mean all you have to do is uh, um, hover over it and you can see why some provinces are growing faster than others um, and I'll talk about national focus in a second um, supply limit I told you guys about this about uh, amount of troops so 8,000 troops here it has a supply limit of 20 so it can only affect uh, supply 20,000 anything above these guys will start taking damage from lack of food, lack of proper clothing, think of things like that. That's what affects it. Um, revolt risk, how likely is there to be a revolt here? Right now 0% and we can see why. Um, I mean there's no cause for it. Culture is Andalusian. Uh, they're the same culture as us, Castilian. If you remember up here, us as Castilian, that's what you want. That's good. So we're having no negative from tax or anything like that. If this was outside of our uh, culture group, we'd get a negative from tax and other goods. So it's good that it's part of our culture. Uh, manpower is 212, the amount of um, soldiers that this province can supply each year. I uh, hover over that, you can see. Um, uh, and then stability cost. And uh, all your provinces added up together is how much it costs to get to the next level of here of stability see 357 this is all our stability costs added up together on all our provinces and I can see what's increasing them and what's decreasing them obviously you want to have a very low stability cost after that we can see the fort level so it's got fort level 1 and garrison um, garrison is uh, basically over time the garrison will be reduced until you can either like like, for those of you guys that's played uh, Crusader Kings 2, it's the exact same idea. Um, once it becomes low enough, if you have a large enough army, you can try to assault it. Otherwise, you just wait until they starve and they surrender. But level 1 fort shows you what the fort level is. Um, in reality, actually, as it says, the fort defense is 10.5. And that 0.5 is coming from um, prestige, I suppose, and from the offensive versus defensive. So... Um, It'll basically take longer. Um, hold on, let me see. Toulouse is level 2. So their fort defense is 15. Because luck, um, I don't know what luck actually has to do with it. But that's luck is 25%, prestige, and because they have more offensive, it's decreased, but altogether that's a fort defense of 15. Um, but to give you another level 1 fort idea, Algrave, level 1, uh, fort defense is 25. Because luck is 25%. I guess this is an AI thing, luck. Um, and uh, 0.2. So, uh, or let's say you give Badajoz also 10.5. Actually, the rest of them should all be 10.5. But it depends on... Um, uh, so forts can differ in defense, basically. And how long it will take to take them. Um, so yeah, so that finishes this side of it. The trade and everything that finishes actually that finishes everything that I had to talk about except for the ledger um, which I think you guys don't really have much questions about so now's the time to ask any questions about anything anything that you want me to talk more about any straight-up questions uh, before I get into the ledger I'm not gonna spend as much time in the ledger just because it's something which should be very straightforward but um, I'll go through it. And there's lots of pages to it as well. Um, any questions from anyone? Anyone, please. I'm going to take a short water break. Uh, think of questions or things you want me to elaborate before I go into the ledger. But basically, I've pretty much finished talking about and teaching you guys about all the mechanics. Now I'm just going to tell you about some extra information, um, areas where you can get information.